Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another live in the UU tier. I'm not feeling too great today. I had a pretty shitty day, uh, but I'm gonna try to record this video for you guys anyway. And uh, I grabbed a team off of the uh, the forums because I couldn't uh, think of anything to make uh, off the top of my head. And uh, just wanted to to be uh, take it easy today and just uh, sit back, play, play a little bit of Pokemon for you guys. And uh, let's hop right into it. It's a really cool team. Bandit, Tyrantrum, Spec, Sylveon. Uh, Mega Swampert, Defensive Umbreon, got Rock Setter, um, Cobalion over here, and it's actually a Sharp Beak, um, Sharp Beak Crobat over here, which is kind of cool. Uh, Inner Focus, uh, why is it Inner Focus? Shouldn't it be Infiltrator? I think it is. Uh, with Brave Bird, U-Turn. I guess, uh, this isn't bad for flinching if it is Inner Focus, but I don't see the, uh, a lot of use for it. Pretty cool team right off the bat. My opponent has a Slurpuff, which is extremely dangerous. Luckily, pretty much everything on my team can... Uh, body that thing. Uh, I can never set up on anything, I do not think, because of the sharp beak crowbat. So, uh, gotta watch out for trick uh, Porygon Z. That could be a little bit annoying. So, I think what I'm gonna do here is just lead off probably with uh, with Cobalion or Crobat. Uh, Crobat gives me initiative, which is nice. So, I am just gonna lead with Crobat right here. Opponent chooses to leave the fortress. That is absolutely fine. I uh, don't have any fire moves on this team, which is a little bit annoying, um, as I will not be able to, uh, to wear this thing down quite as quickly as I would like. This is actually not Rock Setter uh, Cobalion. Uh, we're Rock... Okay, we're Defensive Mega Swampert with Skull. Interesting. All right, so we're going to uh, U-turn out right here. Uh, we're going to go into Swampert, which actually handles this thing pretty well. Um, I can just go for the, uh, the Stealth Rocks right here. And uh, my opponent can very easily switch into uh, to pretty much anything at this point. I uh, choose to just go for a layer of spikes. That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to throw off a Scald right here. It is going to do 47% with a crit, so very nice. Uh, we do have a Defogger in Crobat, so I'm not too worried about all these hazards. Uh, but I am going to keep rocks up on my opponent's side of the field for just a little bit longer. Uh, he goes for another layer of spikes right there. What I'm going to do here is actually roar him out. As he goes for the Custab Berry Explosion. Okay, so that does a lot of damage, uh, but that's absolutely fine. I reveal Roar right there, which is not the best, uh, but it's not the worst either. My opponent goes into Porygon, so I'm expecting a um, uh, just a try attack right here. I don't really have a very good switch into this, so I think I might just let Swampert go down, which would be okay. Uh, I'm just going to go for the EQ. He is going to go for the try attack that is going to be able to knock us out. I'm assuming it's a Specs variant. Uh, now... I can do one of two things. I can either defog all these hazards away immediately and then go into Cobalion and fire off a close combat on pretty much anything on my opponent's team, barring the Chandelure, which is a little bit annoying, but... Um, or I can just go straight into Cobalion and click uh, close combat. So those are my two options. This thing could be Scarfed. We don't know yet because the Scarf Tri Attack should have been able to take out Swampert regardless. So uh, I think Cobalion is just the play anyway, though. Uh, we don't have, uh, we do have leftovers though, okay, that's good, that's very good, <laughs> alright, let's go for the close combat, uh, nothing on his team wants to switch into this, maybe, uh, defensive Salamence, if that's what it is, I'm expecting a Scarf variant looking at the team, uh, potentially Specs Chandelure, maybe even Sub Call Mind, who knows to beat Stall, because this team doesn't deal with it very well, uh, outside of the hazard stacking, so... My opponent is just going to switch directly into Blastoise as I go for the close combat, knocking this thing down to 37%, and I'm going to go for another one right here, as uh, we will be able to knock this thing out. Even with the defense raise, it should go down right here, and uh, now I guess he gets a free switch out into a Chandelure, which is okay. We do have the Iron Head for the Slurp buff, so he can't really bring that in. He could knock us out with a play rough afterwards, but I mean, he doesn't gain too much from that. He is just going to go into Chandelure. I'm expecting either Fire Move or Ghost Move. I think either way, Umbreon doesn't do too much this game, so I'm just going to go into it right here. Should he choose to go for a ghost type move, we should be good. He actually chooses to go for a trick, which is kind of cool, uh, because now I'll be able to outspeed this thing, because I'm Choice Scarf. Uh, maybe not, actually. It depends. If he's modest, we'll be able to outspeed. Uh, I'm going to go for the Foul Play right here. As he misses a Fire Blast, this Foul Play should be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, it does 55%. And he can't really bring anything in on this either. Uh, he goes for the Fire Blast. That's going to knock us down to 23%. We're going to get this another Foul Play off. Uh, Slurp Buff can't set up on us because Foul Play will, will absolutely destroy it. Um, actually, we're probably faster than it right now. Uh, no, maybe not. He would have to be adamant for us to be faster. So he would get off the Belly Drum first. Uh, and then we would foul play him and it would do a tremendous amount of damage. So it, was a, it makes the safe play into Porygon Z. 
Uh, we are just going to foul play right here as he goes for a try attack. Uh, again, Cobalion comes back in, but now I think I actually want to get rid of the hazards, uh, potentially. Uh, no, I think it's still too early for that. Cobalion is still the play. Uh, I don't lose anything from this play. I can just close combat. If he goes into Salamence, that's fine. He does just choose to let his Porygon Z drop. And now I'm expecting the Salamence to come in. However, the only thing it can lock itself into at this point is Outrage because I still have the Crobat in the back. So, not sure if I want to actually keep this thing around. Uh, and possibly... Well, Tyrantrum doesn't do much at this point because it is Choice Bandit. It does not speed either of the remaining Pokemon. So I think Tyrantrum is my sack every time. Hopefully he's not DD. That would, uh, that would be terrible. Uh, as he goes for Earthquake, that's fine. We do see the Moxie, so I'm assuming he is scarfed so he cannot stay in right here uh, meaning that i can actually just go for a brave bird and weaken the slurpuff that's coming in right here uh, pop it citrus berry bring it down into unburden and now i can roost off the damage or i can go for the uh how do i want to play this um i think I think if he goes for Outrage, he can't win if he goes uh, for Outrage, so I can just go for Brave Bird again. He goes for Return, that's perfectly fine, we're gonna live that. And my opponent cannot lock himself into Outrage because I still have the Sylveon in the back. So he has to go for like an Iron Tail or something like that, and that doesn't knock out Cobalion, I think, even after the Hazards. We'll see though. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the Brave Bird right here, and he has the potential to miss the Iron Tail as well. He's gonna go for the Earthquake, so that's not gonna do anything. Uh, we're just gonna Brave Bird this thing, and that is gonna knock it out thanks to the Sharp Beak. So, great first game right there. Uh, despite the Hazard stacking, we were actually able to pull it through without ever getting rid of them. So, his uh, his Hazard stacking was not as effective as uh, just our Rocks up. So, really cool right there. Uh, nice Scarf. Uh, he did miss the Fire Blast on the Umbreon, so I think he could have won that if he... Uh, if he had hit it, because we wouldn't have been able to knock out the Chandelure. Uh, however, I would have been able to go into something else after and just knock it out. But anyway, we got another game right here. A little bit more of an annoying team with the uh, with the Gligar and the Empoleon. Going to be a little bit uh, hard to deal with. I do have Swampert, so that actually uh, checks it pretty well. Um, Swampert does... Actually, Swampert does really, really well here. Uh, minus the Gyarados, it pretty much checks everything on my opponent's team. Um, Mian Shao doesn't appreciate an Earthquake, the uh, Rotom doesn't appreciate a Scald, even if he burns us it doesn't matter, so that's really cool. I think, um, I think Crobat is my lead again. Uh, because of this Gyarados, I just want to be able to outspeed it and U-turn out. Um, I wanted to U-turn on basically anything, like the only thing that would outspeed me is potentially a Scarfed uh, Rotom Heat. So, uh, that's okay. Or a Scarf Mean Shao, of course. We are just going to U-turn right there, and uh, I think Umbreon is pretty safe right here. Uh, he can't really do much to it. He can go behind a sub, or he can just Waterfall, that's fine. That actually does a uh, sizable amount of damage. I uh, will be able to Wish Up right here, though, and pass this off into anything afterwards. Uh, I'm just going to get this Wish Off. There we go. And now I think Swampert is relatively safe. Uh, so is Cobalion. Um, Swampert's just the best, though, because I get up rocks as well, so. Uh, he goes for his own rocks. Uh, we should not be able to outspeed this because we are defensive. Maybe after the Mega Evolution, we'll see. Uh, I am just going to fire off an Earthquake right here as my opponent makes a nice switch into Gyarados. That is fine. I will go for the Stealth Rocks as he goes for a Dragon Dance. And luckily, we are a Roar set, so we're going to be able to Roar him out on the second Dragon Dance, which is really nice. Brings him in a Rotom. Uh, and Rotom can burn me if it wants, but I'm just going to go for a Scald. As my opponent goes right back into Gyarados. So if we get off a burn on this thing, that's really, really good. Uh, let's see if we can get it. And we do not. That's fine, though. I fully expect my opponent to just Waterfall right here. Uh, but I don't have another play. I have to go for Roar just in case he Dragon Dances. As you can see, that does absolutely nothing. We are going to Roar him out into the Sylveon. With the minus uh, two attack, though, we will not even come close to knocking this thing out. So I think Crobat is my play. Uh, as I will be able to take a Choice Specs Hyper Voice. Uh, here we go. Yep, that does 35%, which is pretty much nothing. And now I can just go for the Roost on this turn. I actually do not think that is Specs. Uh, he does go for the Psy Shock. Yep, so that's definitely not Specs. Um, I could predict the Psy Shock and just switch out into like Tyrantrum or something like that. Uh, or I can Brave Bird. It's up to me. Um, Robot's still pretty nice. Um, not sure if I want to just lose it like this. Psy Shock does 58. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. Uh, I'm just going to Brave Bird as he chooses to go into Empoleon, which is fine. I can just roost off this damage once again. If he wants to go for the Defog, that's okay. He goes for the Scald instead, gets a crit. No burn, luckily, though, so we will continue to roost. Just to the point where I can come back in on rocks twice. Uh, he doesn't get the, um, the 
burn right there either. I am just going to go for the U-turn on this turn, and we can safely go out into Umbreon. If he burns us, he gets burned back, thanks to Synchronize. So, this is pretty safe. He does not burn us, though, so that's cool. We are just going to go for the Wish right here, as my opponent goes for a Roar. That's all right. We get thrown into Crobat, and I'm going to go for the... Uh, how much was his Skull doing? 29? Yeah, I have to go for the Roost right here. I can't risk it. Uh, he goes for the Roar, that's okay. Roars me into Swampert, which gets the Wish, which is awesome. And uh, because of Roar, his uh, Gyarados can't just keep coming in, so I am just going to Earthquake right here. He's going to forfeit the match, as you can see. Uh, the pressure from the Rocks plus Swampert's Roar. Uh, this team actually works really nicely. I, I really like it. Shoutouts to uh, to the creator of this team. If you're watching this, uh, I'm sorry I don't have your name up. I'll probably leave you in the description so people can check you out. But uh, really nice team, really cool. Uh, I switched up uh, Inner Focus on the Crobat for um, for Infiltrator, just, you know, to deal with, like, um, Sub, uh, Chandelure, which, I mean, the, the, the team otherwise doesn't deal with very well, uh, as Foul Play doesn't do too much to it from Umbreon, uh, plus I have to come in on it, I have to take a potential plus one Fire Blast, Swampert doesn't appreciate this, uh, the Shadow Ball at plus one, uh, Sylveon is spec, so it has to lock itself into a move, and I have nothing super effective for it either, uh, and Tyrantrum doesn't outspeed and gets blown back by a Shadow Ball, so I think the Infiltrator is extremely useful, uh, specifically for that set. Uh, here we have a, uh, whew, this looks like, um, I don't know why, but this team reminded me of, like, a GBA team. I just see, uh, like, John's Reuniclus and, uh, Chimpax Steelix. I see a bunch of Pokemon that you normally see, uh, on GBA teams, like, especially with the Shinies and everything. You got Tup's Heracross, so, uh, it's a pretty cool team. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to break down because of the Reuniclus. I don't have anything to hit that thing for super effective damage outside of U-turn and foul play. So, I mean, my walls can definitely break it, but uh, my opponent's just going to forfeit, I guess, um, giving me some free points. So let's get a, let's get another one. We're only at 12 minutes, and we already finished up two games, so that's really nice. My opponent has a Hoopa and a Porygon 2 and a Cathagrigus, so very, very annoying team, plus a um, an Aggron. Uh, Swamper puts in a lot of work here once again. Uh, because of the fact that it is a defensive Mega Swampert, so, um, again, I don't see, um, actually, I think I'm gonna swap, I'm gonna, uh, switch up my lead this time. I'm actually gonna lead with Swampert this game because of the Aggron, uh, specifically. I'm just gonna go for Stealth Rocks. This thing is not gonna wanna stay in on a Mega Swampert, potentially, uh, going for an Earthquake. Uh, regardless of Filter, it's still gonna do a lot. The mega Swampert has a lot of, uh physical attack, but he does choose to stay and just go for a Toxic. Uh, if that's the case, I'm just going to switch out into Kabalion right here. Uh, should be able to... Uh, he actually misses another Toxic, so very unfortunate. Uh, I'm just going to go for an SD. If he has the Earthquake, he's going to fire it off right here, and now we're plus two. Uh, so we're going to be able to actually take that very nicely, uh, meaning that I'm going to go up to plus four. Uh, on this turn because I don't want to get the drops from the close combat as he goes for another earthquake knocks us down to 1% so very low uh, but I'm going to deal with something right here something is just going to get destroyed uh, and it's going to be this uh, this aggron he's going to be able to knock us out on the following turn he actually goes for stealth rocks which is interesting um, I'm I'm pretty sure iron head can't take him out I can calc this but Cobalion. if a plus four close combat didn't do the job um, let's see swords dance are we max attack? Uh, we are 220, uh, 272, so very close actually to max attack. Um, say maybe like 232, uh, even less, like 224, yeah, something like that, whatever. Anyway, uh, against uh, Agron, Mega Agron UU tank, uh, let's see. And uh, Iron Head normally does six at plus four. Uh, it's doing 18 min actually. Uh, so that's pretty good. We can go for an Iron Head and knock this thing out. The crit didn't matter uh, unless he was like extremely physically uh, invested, which I very much doubt. Um, as he goes into Crawdont now, he is going to be able to knock us out with uh, an Aqua Jet right here, uh, which is tempting me to switch out into Umbreon because I can pretty much hardwall this thing. Um, unless it's banded, of course. Do I have any reason to keep this? It's really good for the Porygon. It pressures it out every time. And I can get back some leftovers recovery later. Yeah, so I am gonna go into Umbreon. Uh, I lose pretty much nothing if he Dragon Dances. I can just go for the uh, the foul play on the following turn. He is gonna just Aqua Jet. Uh, as you can see, that looks like Banded damage. I'm pretty sure. Let's calc that. Crawdont, uh, Crawdont OU Swords Dance versus uh, Umbreon. So this is without a band. 
Uh, you, you cleric wish. How much defense do we have? That's 257. Is that where we're at? 273, actually. So a little bit of investment, something like 80. Um, a little bit less. Let's say 56. It doesn't really matter. Um, crab hammer, aqua jet. Uh, yeah, aqua jet should never do that much. So I have a couple of plays here. I can actually double into crowbat, which wouldn't be terrible because his like best switch into this is definitely Sylveon. Um, so I can get rid of these rocks right here. He lost his rock setter. Ours is still very well alive. So I am just going to go into Crobat as he pulls the switch into Sylveon. So that is perfect. I am just going to go for the Defog. If he wants to Psy Shock me and he specs, that's perfectly fine. He will lock himself into Psy Shock uh, as he does, as we can see. And now I can go into Umbreon. Go for a Wish. He has to switch out here. He cannot touch me. Probably going to go into P2. Uh, but then I get a switch into Cobalion, as P2 does not have anything that can knock out our Cobalion from the range it's at, I believe. Cobalion, you use Swords Dance versus Porygon 2. Let's see. Uh, Tri-Attack shouldn't be able to take me out. Well, it does 21 max, so it has a chance. Uh, he goes into Crawdont, though. Um, pretty much preventing me from switching into anything. Uh, as I am probably just going to protect on this turn, see what he wants to lock himself into. Goes to the Crab Hammer, that's fine. Uh, foul play is going to do a lot of damage, even a resisted hit. Uh, I'm gonna go for Wish just to scout how much this Crab Hammer is actually gonna do. Alright, well, with a crit, I guess it knocks us out, right? Uh, <laughs> that definitely makes sense. I can go to Cobalion now, though, and uh, I can play some mind games and actually switch out into. Do I wanna go into Swampert here? Yeah, I'm gonna go into Swampert because. Um, his Cofagrius is more than likely coming in. He's going to expect me to be physical when I'm actually uh, special. Uh, well, I've mixed. Uh, let's go for the Stealth Rocks, get them up. Uh, he's going to go for the Will-O-Wisp. He's actually going to miss that. Uh, I'm going to Earthquake on the first turn just to bluff that I'm physical. That actually does 38, which is really good. He's probably just going to go for the Wisp here. He does, and now we're going to throw off a Scald and get off a lot of damage on this thing. 25%. We do not get a burn, unfortunately, but I am just going to go for the Roar. As uh, he goes for the Shadow Ball, I'm going to get him out of here. Comes back in at 37, which is nice. His Sylveon comes in now. Uh, we should be uh, faster, well, slower than this now under the Trick Room. So I don't have a very good play here. He's probably just going to Hyper Voice. Uh, I'm going to go into Cobalion, sack it off. I mean, I kind of need it, I kind of don't. Um, Sylveon's not bad here, but we are very fast. That's the problem. Choice Specs Calm Mind. Interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. Uh, that's pretty good for when you get knocked off, actually. Because your opponent's not going to expect Calm Mind. Uh, I'm just going to go for the Hyper Voice. He's going to get a crit on his, so <laughs> that's pretty much going to be the end of that. Uh, Tyrantrum comes in now, though. And Tyrantrum actually puts in a little bit of work here. Um, let's go for the Head Smash. And we definitely outspeed his team, because he's... Um, uh, he's Trick Room. He's going to go into the uh, Cofagrigus to sack it off. We're going to lose our Rockhead ability, so as a result, we're going to take a little bit of recoil. Uh, I don't think Aqua Jet from Crawdon actually knocks us out. We have to see, but uh, he's going to go into P2. Uh, good play. He's going to get the special attack raise. I'm going to go into Swampert here because when I come back in, I do not want to... Um, okay, he's going to go for the Trick Room, so good play. Um, basically, I don't want to... Uh, take any recoil from my uh, from my attack. So he's gonna go for the tri attack. It's gonna be able to knock us out. Question is, does he have the ice beam? We're about to find out right here. As my opponent, we're we're losing this no matter what because he just goes into Sylveon after. Uh, he does have the ice beam though, and that's gonna be able to knock us out. So a couple of unfortunate crits cost us that game. We are at 19 minutes, so I'm gonna get one more game. We got like six in this episode because of two forfeits. But um, opponent's got a much more manageable team. Uh, the Firewater Grass Core is just so easy to break down uh, with, uh, with like, Sylveon and, and Tyrantrum, so. Uh, let's see what we can do here. I think I need to get up rocks as soon as possible on my opponent. Um, however, the Beedrill is just such a good lead for him. Um, then again, yes and no. Arcanine actually decides to lead, which is awesome. I'm going to get up my rocks right here. Arcanine does not want to stay in on a Scald. Um, but I guess he doesn't care. He's gonna go for Wisp, I'm gonna go for Rocks, I'm gonna go for Scald on this turn. He thinks he can take an Earthquake, that's not a problem, he's physically defensive. If he switches into anything but the Vaporeon, 
uh, we are going to potentially get a burn off on something. So uh, let's see, can we get it? No Scald Burns this episode, it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Um, my opponent's free to Leech Seed right here. Um, I don't mind Crobat taking the Leech Seed at all. And uh, he actually goes for Spikes, okay, that's not bad. That we can deal with. He has to switch out here, he cannot stay in. So I'm gonna pull a U-turn uh, on the Dawn Fan switch. And uh, that's going to get us out into, I think Sylveon is probably the best. Uh, choice Specs, Hyper Voice is going to nuke pretty much everything. Minus Blissey, of course. Um, yeah, let's go into Swampert. Uh, Swampert's just safer overall. Uh, I can just throw out another Scald at this point. Or I can Roar. Uh, I think Roar... Uh, no, Scald's definitely my best play. Uh, it's going to do 65%. He's just going to get up his rocks anyway, so that's not a problem. I'm expecting Vaporeon to want to come in here. So I'm just going to go for a Roar, uh, as Blissey actually chooses to come out, so that's cool. We get two, uh, two rounds of, um, of Stealth Rocks off on that thing, so that's nice. Uh, I'm just going to throw out a Scald this time, try to knock out the Dawn Van, as he actually switches out into Vaporeon, which is okay. I'm just going to get a little bit of Residual. Actually, I'm just going to Roar. Um, if he Scalds, that's okay. I don't care. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to Roar him out into the Blissey. The Blissey is going to come in. I'm going to Roar again. And uh, should he try to switch into anything to heal it up, uh, it's not necessarily going to work. I'm going to roar him out, hopefully not into the Dawn Fan. Awesome, into the Arcanine. Okay, that we can deal with. If this thing is physically defensive, that means that Tyrantrum comes in here and pretty much destroys something with a head smash because his Dawn Fan is weakened. Something is dying <laughs> right here, and it's going to be the Arcanine. Awesome. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage, not a big deal. Uh, we got rid of the Arcanine, which is really, really good for Sylveon, uh, because the only thing that switches into it now is Blissey, so if we can knock that thing out, then uh, Sylveon pretty much sweeps. Uh, we just gotta deal with the Beedrill a little bit as well. I'm gonna go for the Head Smash right here, um, just to weaken this thing, uh, as he goes for a Leech Seed, because that's kind of what I was expecting. And uh, now we're gonna go into Crobat, and uh, we'll see what he wants to switch out into. His Dawn Fan can no longer switch in on our Crobat, so that's awesome. Uh, his Blissey is going to have a hard time dealing with it as well. And uh, I can just go for the Defog right here. As my opponent goes out into Vaporeon, that's fine. We just got rid of all these hazards. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, and we can U-turn freely here. Uh, I think my play is into uh, Sylveon 100% of the time. As my opponent goes for a Scald. And now he has to deal with a Hyper Voice. So I'm actually going to predict the Blissey coming in. I'm going to go for a Baton Pass. Uh, as he actually chooses to stay in, interesting, uh, probably gonna wish, so how can I counter that? Uh, let's go to Umbreon, as he actually goes for a Toxic, so that's awesome, we get a Toxic off on his Vaporeon, and we have Heal Bell, I'm gonna go for Wish, I don't know if he has Heal Bell on his, uh, it's probably Wish, Toxic, Scald, Protect, that would make the most sense, uh, Heal Bell maybe on Blissey, uh, gonna go for the Wish right here, and what I'm actually gonna do is pass this into Tyrantrum to heal it up, uh, and again, nothing on his team switches into a head smash, so he's looking kind of good. Uh, his Blissey is going to go for a Wish, and uh, what can he switch into? He can go into Chestnut, so I'm actually going to predict that and go into Crobat right here, as the Chestnut does come in. Awesome. Thank God it wasn't the Dawn Fan. That's what I was fearing the most, but uh, seeing as his Vaporeon is now toxic, I can just freely Brave Bird here. He goes for the Spiky Shield. That's okay. Um... I went for Defog and switched out, I went for U-Turn, I went for Brave Bird, he might think I'm Choice, I'm gonna Roost right here, uh, let's see what he wants to do, I very much doubt he's gonna stay in, he's gonna go into Blissey, good play, uh, I'm just gonna go for a U-Turn here, and uh, we're gonna just keep playing this game of U-Turning back and forth, uh, I'm never letting this thing just stay in on me for free, I'm actually gonna go into Cobalion right here, because uh, Cobalion puts pressure on this, and uh, I'm gonna go for the Substitute on this turn. Uh, the Chestnut chooses to come in. I'm going to go for a Swords Dance and see if this thing actually has anything to hit me with. It should have Drain Punch, um, but I don't know if that's going to do all that much, honestly. He's got Power Up Punch. He's not going to be able to break our sub with a Power Up Punch, so let's let's calc something here. Chestnut, physically defensive, versus Cobalion. Uh, the UU Swords Dance set, but I think we have a lot of defensive investment, don't we? 323, 294... Uh, no, we don't, actually, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, he has power-up punch. He has the power-up punch. So, how many power-up punches... Okay, so that was actually a roll to, to knock out our sub. Um, but a physically defensive chestnut 
does not appreciate a close combat at all. In fact, we might be able to two-hit KO him, depending on rolls. Uh, we need a pretty good roll here. Uh, we have an 82% uh, an 82% chance to hit KO him after the uh, after the leftovers. So I am just gonna go for close combat. Uh, as you can see, that does 56%, which means the next one is a guaranteed Oko. So that's awesome. We just uh, we just knock something out here. Something drops, and uh, nothing can really come in on this. So this is looking like a pretty good game. Uh, we get rid of the chestnut, which was a huge issue. Uh, especially for like Umbreon and uh, Tyrantrum actually it was a huge issue for Tyrantrum uh, his Beedrill has to protect here's the thing his Beedrill absolutely has to protect so I can go for the sub on this turn uh, as he protects um, he's actually not gonna protect he's gonna just straight up go for the drill run so good play knowing that I have sub of course uh, but I can switch into Crobat at any time I can get my Cobalion out of here, and Cobalion pressures the Blissey every time it's in, so... Uh, he's just gonna go for the Drill Run, that's absolutely fine, he cannot touch us, I can just go for the U-Turn. His is faster, so that's gonna give us initiative back into our Cobalion, depending on what he wants to go into. He goes into the Blissey, that's perfectly fine, I can just go straight into the Cobalion. The uh, Vaporeon is still toxic, so it doesn't appreciate being in here. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Swords Dance again. We'll see what my opponent wants to do. Crobat hard walls the Beedrill, which makes Crobat so good in this tier, man. You have a Pokemon that completely shuts down Beedrill. That's amazing. And it, it's a flying type. <laughs> That's so good. That's uh, amazing. I, I love Crobat, man. Crobat was one of the first Pokemon that I ever used um, in competitive. I used it in conjunction with, like, um, Life Orb Greninja, Mega Mawile, like, it was a really cool core, it was, I, I was just starting to play Pokemon, and, like, it was a really, really solid team, I actually made it pretty high on the ladder with that team, uh, and this was back, uh, beginning of X and Y, when both of those, uh, those ridiculous Pokemon were allowed, <laughs> Protean Greninja, and, uh, huge, <laughs> excuse me, you see, that makes me choke up, huge power Mega Mawile, so, my opponent's gonna forfeit, so that's gonna wrap it up for this, uh, for this live, guys, we took a couple of wins, a few wins, actually. I think it was, like, three, and we got one loss, so, uh, we take, maybe, probably took, like, five wins because of the forfeits, but anyway, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. As always, subscribe if you haven't already. Check out more of these lives. I put out four to five lives a week, and, uh, definitely hit me up on uh, Facebook, on Twitter. Both are in des the description. Leave a comment for me. Let me know what you thought of the team, what you think could be improved, and, uh, if you have any other teams that you want to see us use, definitely uh, leave a paste bin link in, in the description for me. I don't want to get completely lazy with team building, but uh, I like to uh, to relax sometimes and just use something that somebody else built. So, uh, shoutouts to the guy. Let me actually pause this and bring up his... Yeah, so shoutouts to Higher Places right here. Um, he only, I think, just joined uh, Smogon a few months ago. So, really, really impressive. Um, I have a, an account, but I never post on the forums or anything, but... Uh, very, uh, very great team. Uh, I really, really like it. Uh, the only change that I made, of course, was changing, um, Crobat's ability from, uh, his ability was actually Infiltrator on here, which is interesting. Uh, I don't know why it changed to Inner Focus when I imported it, but anyway. Um, Damp is cool because if you don't Mega Evolve, I could have taken that explosion if I hadn't Mega Evolved, <laughs> which is funny. Um, yeah, so really cool team. Again, uh, shoutouts to Higher Places. And, uh, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.